Welcome back, ZRK fans, to Nanalee the Dawn, I'm your host, Dominic, and we have another match, Kingstad versus Dyth on Eye of Horus. Kingstad going for the Light Beagle Factory, and Dyth going for tanks. No cloakies. Actually, I feel weird to say that that feels a bit weird, but... Yeah. Apparently, Kingstad is a bit hangover. Which, good to know. I don't know whose hangover they are, but apparently they are someone's hangover. Presumably their own. Anyway, Kingstad going for a little bit of a scouting mission while Dyth is going for... Oh, it must be why Kingstad didn't want to show the replay, because I'm thinking, oh, is it just a super... a stomp? Like... The win percentage wasn't great, but at the same time, it was what came up, so I thought, oh, maybe it could be interesting. Anyway, Dyth coming here with the Kodachi might be able to find some value. There's not a whole lot of defenses. Kingstad's commander, of course, being a possible issue, but it is just barely avoided. Nicely done, Dyth. Knowing that range, taking full advantage of that, and able to get rid of a metal extractor for basically free. Kingstad not going for repair up until it's dead, and it is indeed dead. So that's three metal per second behind that Kingstad has become, and Dyth able to just get away with that for free. Well, maybe the Kodachi here should be intercepted by the second Scorcher, and that will be it for the Kodachi. But it did damage. It did some work. Actually, is that... Nah, that's, that Scorch is not going to die. That Scorch will be very much alive. But hey, Kingstad, a little bit behind as a result. Dyth able to expand in the process, and also able to provide a lot of pressure. Getting rid of one of the darts that came into scout, and Kingstad basically had to hang back to defend, so Dyth able to take advantage of that and start expanding. So Dyth ahead by 6 metal per second this early in the game, which I have horse, that isn't terribly unlikely. Considering all the metal extractors are 3 metal per second each, yeah, you're going to get past what your opponent's at quite quickly. Yeah, sorry, Kingstad, I... I'm surprised I thought you would... Yeah, sorry. For those of you not familiar, the term hangover is a noun. If things can have a hangover, you can have a hangover, but the past tense verb is hungover. It's one of those weird things with the word hang in the English language because it's, it goes in the past tense two different ways. So that kind of makes sense. I can see why people would be confused. But yeah, hungover is the verb used to apply to yourself. The, I want to say intransitive verb. While hangover is the noun. Anyway. Back to the game and away from the basic English lesson. We, well, I guess, basic English lesson for adults. Because I don't think basic English lesson for children would include the, the conjugation of hungover. Or hangover. Or having a hangover. All that stuff. Anyway, completely unrelated to that, Kingstad coming in, despite being hungover, able to wipe out a bunch of, well, everything that Dyth had built up. All the stuff that Dyth had done from basically distracting Kingstad with a single Kodachi, which admittedly has also led to more harassment from another Kodachi, able to wipe out Kingstad's entire base, so to some extent it was kind of for nothing. But yeah, at this point, Dyth still ahead, despite all that, simply for the damage that was dealt right there. Unfortunately, Dyth did lose the welder that was coming in and helping out here with this. There is enough reclaim that Dyth should be able to build back up, but Kingstad has managed to get the upper hand again on economy, having expanded while doing this, because, as always, when you can, attack while expanding. It's a great way to get in and do a lot of damage while being able to consistently do damage later on in the game. At the same time, Dyth decided to expand over to the eastern side of the map instead of rebuilding to the western side, which, yeah, don't rebuild to the western side quite yet. They do have a welder on the way, which is good. They just shouldn't do it until they've actually cleared out all the forces. Now they've cleared out the forces. All right, go in, Welder. It's your turn. Same time, this Kodachi is just doing work. I mean, how much damage has it dealt? Well, it's got one of the pips, so I guess it's dealt its cost and damage, or a little bit more. The fencer will be the end of it, but hey, it got rid of the metal extractors. It put Kings down in the back foot, put Dyth in a position they can get back up. Basically made up for the fact that Dyth got harassed themselves. So, yeah, that was a really good Kodachi. It's keeping Dyth in the game. On the other hand, Dyth is still kind of... I mean, they were still hit pretty hard. They didn't have a lot of defenses, so I say it's keeping them in the game, but I feel like Dyth might want to invest in a little bit of static defense just in case another harassment wave comes, which, well, spoiler alert, it's about to. And Dyth, are you aware of this? Yes, Dyth is aware of this. They have radar. So for those of you wondering whether or not Dyth has radar, they indeed do. It didn't seem to help, but they have it. I mean, they got the forces in reasonably quick, but they did lose the Mason. Or, Welder. 
And once you lose your worker, it's kind of hard to build up. That's kind of what the engineers do. They, they build things. Actually, this welder over here is also probably going to go down. It, I mean, it'll fight back a little bit. Might be able to take care of one of the Scorchers, but four Scorchers pretty much wipe out everything. Why are you not moving, Ogre? There's just... You're... Oh, no! I, uh, okay, well, that that's a dead welder. That That is a dead welder. The Ogre could have saved it. Fence it over the front line, at least stopping any... No, never mind. Stopping any reinforcements from coming in. Stopping that Kodachi from coming in. This kind of explains why Dyke wasn't moving back, but still. Scorchers, in your base. The Ogre is there managing to get rid of it, but now Dyth has actually fallen behind economically. Now over the front lines, we do have an Ogre that might be able to take care of all this stuff. The Fencers, yeah, the Fencers won't be able to take care of it. The counter for Ogre, besides Dominatrix, which, yeah, good call there. Going for the Dominatrix. So they got the counter. I mean, the other one, I say, a little bit riskier, but by cost, Ravager-Fencer in a 2 to 1 ratio should pretty much... Like, it breaks even by cost, and it will be a little bit better... It's a bit of a positioning game at that point, but if you have enough Fencers and Ravagers, yeah. Well, I think it's two Fencers, one Ravager equals a single Ogre. Yeah, that's right. Two Fencers, one Ravager for an Ogre, and then, yeah, the Ravager just tanks, the Fencers do all the damage. If you do that, then, yeah, you can take care of Ogres pretty well. Or you can just use Dominatrix, but as we can see, the Dominatrix only lasts so long until the ally comes in, and now your opponent basically gets a free Ogre. Anyway, we have another bit of harassment coming in here. Dyth able to expand again over to the northwest, but they've lost the northeast, and Kingstad's taken a lot of stuff over in the back lines. So Kingstad in a very secure position. Dyth not so much in a secure position. In fact, Dyth doing a lot of work with these ogres. Again, the ogre will be able to beat the fencers. It's just ogres can tank the fencer shots as they come in. Like, the main reason why skirmishers beat riot units is because skirmishers can usually outdamage riot units from range. But in the case of Ogres, that doesn't really so much happen. At this point, Dominatrix against two Ogres is not going to go so well, even considering the fact that it is taking things over. Two Dominatrixes might work, maybe. In fact, that's, yeah, that will work, because now, there we go. So I was about to say, each Dominatrix has to wait for the reload time, but with two of them, that works. You get as many as you have the things you want to capture, don't have to worry about it at all. Now, why the Dommies are coming in with the Ogres, I can kind of see. I mean... If they come in with the Ogres, they can take things over as they go. The problem, of course, is that they make themselves vulnerable. And it's kind of tricky, because if you move the Ogres too far ahead, the Dominatrices might not be vulnerable because the Ogres will take the hits, but then if the Dominatrices get hit from behind, they're going to be torn to pieces. And if you put it too close, then, of course, the Dominatrices get on the front line. Yeah, of course, the Dominatrices are a bit of a problem. They, I would... I don't know if I'd say they're uncounterable. When you're dealing with tanks, it is difficult, because... There aren't a lot of cheap units you can use to throw in. I mean, Darloth recommending Blitz, which I was thinking... Like, it's kind of tricky. Blitz is faster, so it's a bit, able, bit better able to come in and start tearing it apart. But the thing with dealing with Dominatrices is that you have to assume that you're going to lose some units. And Blitzes are not cheap. They're less than... They're a little more than half the cost of an Ogre. So two Blitzes coming in here, that'd be basically another Ogre being lost. I can see it for speed, I can kind of see it for cost, I can see it for damage dealt, and I think, hang on, okay, 820 HP and Blitz's deal, what's it, 500 damage? Yeah, 500 lightning damage. So, with that, I mean, if they're damaged like this one is, they could be EMP'd in one go, but otherwise it'd be two shots to EMP, so two or three Blitzes would do the trick because they just EMP everything out, but it's kind of tricky. Could actually, on the other hand, they don't deal as much damage, so a lot of it is the afterburn. But they're also cheaper and can do a lot more hit and run. Although, on the other hand, their range is just not great. Right, range 175 compared to range 450. Yeah, I think Blitz is a good choice. Range 245. I mean, again, it's a matter of speed versus range. But geez, that'd be a tricky situation. I can, yeah, I can see where Dice coming from. I mean, granted, Dummies are also kind of the only really solid counter to Ogres. Otherwise, Ogres just basically run all over everything in the Vehicle Factor. Again, with the partial exception of Ravagers backed up by Fencers. Ravagers backed up by Fencers will help. But against Dominatrix on the ground for tanks, I'm really not sure. Again, Blitz is the only thing that comes to mind, and that was suggested by chat in the game, in the replay. So, I honestly am not sure. The use of the Emissaries does make sense. They are, I mean, Dommies aren't very fast, so the Emissaries would probably help. 
But even then, it's still just not a great choice. And of course, the fact is you're spending a lot of money on this backline artillery unit and not a lot of money on the front lines to actually defend against all the Ravagers coming in, which are tearing apart basically everything Dyth has built up as King's Tower. They've taken over the entire map. At this point, Dyth is basically nothing. And as we're seeing, yeah, King's Tower is coming in with all the Ravagers and tearing everything to pieces. And Kodachi's coming in trying to do what they can. I just don't know if I see how it's going to work out. It just, it feels like the Kodachis really don't have much of a chance here. I mean, they might. It's just, I don't know. It seems kind of unlikely in a way. Anyway, the Kodachi's able to come in here and at least help out a little bit. Ogre's also able to get rid of these Ravagers because, again, there's enough of them. And the Ravagers are not targeting the Ogres. But, yeah, this is... It's not great. This is really a situation that Dyth68 was trying to avoid, trying to push back from, but those dominatrices, they aren't on the front lines right now, but they're still this constant threat. I mean, sooner or later, they have to be dealt with. Now, to be fair, the Wolves is doing a fine job getting rid of the Ravagers, and the Ogre is not being targeted. The Ravagers pretty much have to hit the Ogre directly. Like, all of them have to fight the Ogre in order to deal with it, and they are doing that. And along with the Kodachi, yeah, I can see why the Dominatrices are being used. And Dyth is managing to push back with the Ogre Emissary and get their economy back on track. But at this point, I would actually kind of recommend doing a switch. I'm actually curious, are we going to see anything else? Because at this point, Kingstad has 90 metal per second. They have one factory. I think they have one factory. Is it just the one? Yeah, it looks like they have just the one factory. Just the vehicle factory. And it's not a bad thing. I mean, they can build a lot of units with the vehicle factory. But it's still kind of limited. So the only thing I can think of right now is Dyth, if they switch off to air or something, they, I mean, it's a little bit tricky because they have to deal with fencers, they have to deal with possible crasher switch. But that's the only way I can think to get rid of the dummies in any reasonable amount of time. And unfortunately, Dyth doesn't really have the money to make that work out. So they throw in the towel and that is game. But yeah, I'm really not sure what to use against Dominatrix other than maybe Blitz. Blitz and lots of them. Oh, why are the FPS kind of on? Blitz and lots of them. That's the only thing that comes to mind. What's, oh, excess chart. Kingstead excess 3258 metal. I mean, Kingstead, you asked me to look at that. Okay, Kingstead also pointing out that Kodachi is a good choice for the fact that they, even if they are captured, they're not going to be killing each other that quickly, so they're still going to deal more damage to the Dominatrix than to each other. That's a really good point. Because, yeah, most fire, most fire shooting units are themselves immune to burn damage. Like, they'll be hit by the initial explosion, but they won't be hit by burning afterwards. So yeah, Kodachis aren't a bad idea, and that would have been my first choice just because they're so cheap, and if they get captured, it's not a big deal. You have, like, three or four of them for the cost of, I think, one Dami? I want to say it's the cost of one Dami. It's, what, 400, 500? 420 metal. Yeah, so you'd have three Kodachis for the cost of one Dominatrix. More or less. It's, I think, a little bit more expensive to have the Kodachis. Not by much, but it is a little bit more expensive. Do I have Kodachi corpses here I can work with? No, I don't have any dead Kodachis. I can check. Just to double check. But yeah, Kodachis are... Serious? Ah, here it is. Oh, 160 metal. Yeah, so it's a little bit more expensive to get three Kodachis, but it's about the same cost. And yeah, I guess Dominatrix, that would still deal a decent chunk of damage. I mean, base shot is 70 damage, burns for 30 damage on top of that. So yeah, three in there. There's two ten per hit. That'd be about three or four hits. Oh, four hits. It'd be four hits, depending on the burn damage, which doesn't stack. So yeah, four hits. Yeah, if you get four connections in there, you can you can one shot a dummy. I just keep doing that, and they have pretty high reload time or pretty low reload time compared to the dominatrix. You lose one Kodachi, it's not a big deal. You keep hitting the other ones. I mean, if they have two or three Kodachis, you can have... Sorry, two or three Dominatrices, you can easily have a dozen Kodachis, and at that point, the Dominatrices are dead. So, yeah, no, you're right. You're right, Kingstead. That is... The Kodachis are an obvious choice, and not a bad one, either. But that is kind of specific, because it does mean that you're getting a lot of Kodachis when your opponent could easily start getting literally anything else. <laughs> at that point, your opponent could easily just turn that into getting right units thrown, like Rippers, or hell, even Ravagers, and then just rip them apart. Or just Fencer support. I think that's where Blitz comes in, is that Blitz does have higher HP and can EMP. I think, like, Blitz, Kodachi combined like, have lead with Kodachi so the Dummies capture some of the Kodachi. No. Well, maybe. Yeah. 
Thinking, do you want them to capture the Kodas or the Blitzes? Sheesh. Yeah, that's really hard. That's the thing you got to think about. It's like, what opponents do I want my... Or what units do I want my opponent to have? That is a very key question because your opponent is going to have all these units from yours. And I mean, the one real thing in this calculus is that you don't have to worry about whether or not the Kodachis are killing each other because they're probably not going to. Wow, that's a tough question. Anyway, let's table that for now and move on to the last match for tonight, which is going to be Goda versus Sparkles on Trojan Hills. So feel free to discuss theory crafting on the Kodachi stuff, or the Dominatrix stuff in the chat. But we're going to be moving on to the next game, so stay tuned. We'll be back in a couple minutes. <laughs> 